and the point of, of the seal on the form of a writ was that it indemnified both the monarch and the court from being sued by the plaintiff, by the, uh, the uh, petitioner, the one who is making the prayer. Well, the plaintiff is the one who makes the prayer. So we are talking about an early version of indulgence because a fee was also paid and it's a form of insurance. A writ, therefore, is a form of indulgence. Now, before we talk about how do we validate a couple of these elements like seals, let's look at uh, what we have here. We have a prayer being the writ and, and a symbiotic relationship that a cause of action cannot start unless a prayer commences. Now, when the cause of action starts, we have a number of things. We have a confession. We have a sentence. And we have a form of absolution or penitence. Punishment in the penitentiary. So what are we talking about here? Because if we can understand the why it is a writ so important, then we can understand uh, why um, in their basic rules, how they're breaking it and how to expose their breaking of it through interrogatories and through other elements and then hoist them on their own petard. Well, it makes sense when you realise that while they deny canon law has any function in their courts, canon law is the primary reason the courts operate the way they do. Because a court case, a, a cause of action, is nothing more than the procedure of penance, the sacrament of penance. Prayer, confession, penitence, absolution. The sacrament of penance. Prayer, writ, confession, hearing, sentence, penitence, absolution, go to prison, pay the fine, move on. We are dealing with entirely a sacred sacrament, quote unquote sacred, of the Roman cult operating in an oratory. And it is absolutely a washing with Roman cult rules. Now, why is this important? Why is this relevant? In the writs that we're issuing, we will be using our own law to establish our right and we will be sealing those writs in an ancient manner, in the manner of Leviticus, using the, the right toe, foot, thumbprint and a drop of blood to symbolise the atonement, the purification and the right of representing the divine by the most ancient principle. And we're going to do that and we're going to issue these writs with three people issuing them into the system and we'll have a deed attached and in that deed will be interrogatories. And one of the arguments that comes from everything I've said tonight, this is fine, but these people don't honour anything. And I've told you their mindset, they don't care. They don't care about the honour. But here's the thing. If you try and hoist these people on them abusing a statute, it's a statute. Abusing a procedure, it's a procedure. But when you can prove categorically that they are absolutely abusing the primary form of law by which courts themselves exist, now you have something that can be raised up the line to a rector of the Jesuits or an Archbishop of the Catholic Church, or the Archbishop of Canterbury, or the Pope himself, and watch what happens. But unless you can bring to them the hard evidence that these judges and lawyers deny, categorically deny as proof the rule of law, then they have only two choices. Either they do what they've done every 70 years because of rising stupidity 
and these stupid people, which is to start a war, or find some way of enforcing the system. So it's behoved to us if we want to avoid the option of war as the only button they have to clean out the system because it's broken to show that we can get on the record their absolute, total and utter disregard for the law itself, full stop, their own law, and then raise it up the ranks. Now, if the system doesn't enforce it, the system is collapsing itself. I suggest to you the system will enforce it, and there will be a tsunami of change that comes from that. But we have never done this properly before collectively. We have never done it before. And this is not about perpetuating the system. This is about recognising how to extract remedy from a system where the people at the front line don't care at all about dishonour. Don't care. They just run their lives and are blissfully ignorant and celebrate their ignorance like it's a medal. Now I mentioned the ceiling, which sounds a bit odd, Leviticus. And let me prove to you that they use this system themselves and the registrars would be wholly ignorant of it. Wouldn't have a clue. Some of you might have seen the back of a birth certificate where a baby footprint, thumbprint, and a drop of their blood is placed on the back of a live record, birth record. Is this not Leviticus? Is this not the atonement, purification, and preparation of a baby's spirit to be worthy and to be cleansed of any sin? Well, in the Roman system, we're told that all babies are born with original sin. It's a perversion. It's a curse. Absolutely. We know that money is monetized sin. So when we see the footprint, thumbprint, and drop of blood on the back of a birth certificate, we are witnessing the salvaging of sin. We know they make money from the court. How do they make money? They do it by salvaging sin. If they don't follow the procedure for the salvaging of sin, then all of it is a fraud. Their bonds are a fraud, their money is a fraud, their trusts are a fraud, and the whole thing gets sent up to the line and thrown in their face. There's the proof. They have admitted they don't care. They have admitted it is fraud. Here is their interrogatories. This is the foundations you laid and they do not follow it. Either remove them or remove yourselves. But if you do not respond, then our law becomes a rule of law. I'm mindful of the time and I just want to leave this final point. I know we've covered a lot of ground tonight. We've covered a lot of different areas. Saving and helping your community. First, we have to save ourselves. You can't save someone from drowning until you stop drowning yourself. Drowning is not about money. It's not about court. It's about attitude. It's about stop being a victim. It's about stop thinking that the system will never change. It's about stop thinking because these people are willfully ignorant that nothing will change. We are the change. You are the change. That's the first then we move to help those around us. Then we move to help our community. Communities are about values first. Communities are about connecting each other and restoring those things that work. For example, under Eucadia, under canon law, we say that in life, naturally, there will be many unions that we are engaged in. When you kiss your first girlfriend and have your first girlfriend, that's a form of union. If you ever had a wild night and caught up with a friend, well, that's a union. So many unions in our life, but under you, Katie, we say that there'll only ever be one type of union that is recognised above all 
and it's considered so sacred that once it's formed, it can never be broken. And we call that matrimony in honour of the ancient Latin matrimonium. Not marriage, which is the perversion created by the Roman cult. So marriage is sacred. Sorry, matrimony is sacred. Land. We say promised land. Everyone has a divine right. A divine right of lawful occupation of a domicile, of a, a place to live. This rebuilds a community. Everyone has the divine right to claim their name, their body, their spirit as theirs, not owned by anyone else, as theirs. A live born record. These are the building blocks of the community. When you come together as a community with these kinds of values, then you start to look at things like how do we exchange our energy? How do we work together? How do we start our uh, mediums of exchange? How do we specialise? Communities then is about information management. I've spent my entire life working on information management. And in the notes on how to save and help your community, we will show that communities from the size of 15 to 50 to 500 to 5,000 can turn themselves around in weeks if they embrace the foundations of reform of law, of, of what law is required. When people come together and respect one another, respect each other, respect property, things can be changed very, very quickly. Now, I've gone over time. Uh, we've covered a lot. I thank you for your patience and listening tonight, but there was a lot to cover and all that we're saying will be, will be done. And I look forward to your questions now. So thanks very much. Thank you so much, Frank. It's absolutely incredible, uh, this information. And uh, again, again, what's amazing about some of the information you revealed is it also resolves some of the ancient earlier principles of law of coming together as a community. Uh, and one of those things that you mentioned about Cormac Mark Art is in the Arthurian legends was, of course, the round table. And uh, the round table was actually it was a collection of tablets, which tablets were actually used as ancient markers of, uh, of boundaries. And uh, as such is the round table of communities is a collection of promised land rights. So absolutely fascinating. What I'd like to uh, do is ask the callers if uh, they would want to queue their calls and the questions and answers by uh, uh, dialing in star eight, and we can get into some of the questions. So in uh, in the chat line, is we had some uh, questions in regards to land, and uh, one of them being from the guest Tuna. And one of the uh, questions was regarding claim of property by placing markers and circumscribing the claim. How do we remain in honor? Okay. Well, the the what I'm showing by reading the history is firstly it's not a marker, so please don't don't get sucked in by the rules of meets and bounds. Meets and bounds is a corruption of terrain and survey of a much, much older principle. So think of monuments, not markers. I know it sounds pedantic, but it's extremely important. So um, uh, if you want to get really technical, uh, marking the boundaries was performed by a, a ceremony that included urination. So let's like move past meets and bounds. <laughs> okay. So um, when this is done in the form that we are presenting to you in knowledge, it is done in honour to the ancient principles of the law. By default, it is in honour. When they do not obey their own rules by which land is lawfully occupied, they are in dishonour. So that's a simple answer to your question. Thank you so much, Frank. Uh, that's excellent. Uh, moving right along is uh, if anybody wants to line up uh, in the queue, it's star eight for uh, questions for the callers. Uh, 